Hi all, I have another amazing game of dealer chess to show you. So this is again Senpai in the Chesscon Blitz Battle 2018. Time control 5 minutes with a 2 second increment. Let's have a look. D4 from Leela, we have Knight F6 from Senpai, C4, E6, Knight F3 and it looks as though this is Queen's Gambit declined but we actually enter into the Rigozin variation. So that's kind of a hybrid between the Nimza Indian Bishop B4 move and the Queen's Gambit declined. Bishop G5, Knight BD7, C takes, E takes, E3, Black Castles, Bishop D3, C5, White Castles, and now Senpai doesn't seem to be too worried about giving up the dark square bishop voluntarily. Bishop takes c3. In chess space live book, it seems queen a5 is preferred here. For example, like this, queen c2, c4, and this position with rookie eight, so maintaining that bishop for a little longer. So Senpai took off on c3, and and the pawn on c3 can become a target. And also, of course, we have a nice that pawn there as well. It's a bit fragmented. C4, bishop goes to f5, queen a5 hitting c3, and Lila protects that, rook e8. We have knight d2, g6, and now, as Lila has done in previous games in this position, bishop takes d7. So the knight's hanging now, so it recaptures. So there's no other way to take that, otherwise, f6 drops. And we have the clever move f3 in this position to build up with e4. And Lila scores basically very well from this position. Uh, it's a very, very comfortable strategic advantage here. Uh, we have knight b6, rook a e1. Uh, just in case, just as a recap reminder, in case you haven't seen the analysis of prior games from this position, if f6 and then the sharp g5, this kind of thing just to win e3 really fails miserably to queen f5 here. And black has kind of spectator pieces in this position. So, for example, taking here, this is just really strong for white. It's absolutely, this is an example crush continuation, just to show you the devastation which could happen. So, yeah, it's unwise for black to chase that pawn on e3. So, knight b6, rook a e1. It looks very logical and harmonious to play for e4. So reminiscent a little bit of the Botvinnik against Capablanca classic game plan. Uh, so Bishop D7. We have H4. This can be useful for H5 at any point in the future to try and undermine this pawn chain around the king. It's a very nice idea just to keep this the suspense around that. We have Knight A4 targeting C3 again. That's actually humbly protected here with Rook C1. Uh, H4 also under certain circumstances not just there's a duality actually it's not just about that sometimes if there was f6 in the future and the bishop had to drop back you can imagine that it also holds up against g5 but that's clearly not happening here for a moment but rook e6 does you know potentially support f6 we have e4 and actually f6 is is now played and the bishop drops here so yeah black is without g5 without the punishment of hg Rook a e8, and this pawn is supported. B5, we have rook e3, and now knight b b6. Let's examine here just to get a flavor of things. If b4, white could take, and here, kick that queen. And this is quite pleasant for white. So knight b6 was played. We have knight f1. And now d takes e4. F takes e4, queen a4 offering the exchange of queens. Leader refuses with queen e2, queen a3, rook e1, knight a4. So targeting c3 yet again. d5, we have the rook moving. On knight takes c3, you might think, well, this hits the queen. Uh, probably best is actually queen f3. Just, just to win the knight like that, yeah, with two pieces hanging in, that's not a good idea. So rook e7, e5. We have queen c5 here. Now in this position, uh, knight takes c3. 
in fact queen f3 there's queen c5 here pinning that rook so batter here is actually queen d2 uh, so for example f takes taking is clearly not very good for black and what does black do here uh, f b4 e6 and the two center pawns crash through basically in this scenario absolutely smashing through so okay uh queen c5 was played queen f2 which unpins the rook actually now and we have queen takes d5 it looks like a pretty sharp position in some respects if f takes e5 bishop takes e5 and say queen takes then there's queen f6 and that's pretty annoying with ideas of queen h6 check so here yeah this will be favoring white if black had to do that so uh we have actually here e takes f6 rook takes knight takes e3 hitting the queen queen f7 queen d2 stopping queen takes f6 because of queen takes d7 we have h5 uh on a5 maybe in fact here it's it's possible that h5 is useful for example like this this is a, a nice position for white it seems black's pretty tied down nice form pawn of course on f6 so h5 we have rook f1 bishop c6 at least the bishop's activating now here uh it's interesting this position this is a critical position move 34 stockfish actually prefers bishop h6 here to treat this position with bishop h6 uh, I'll give you an example a5 to put the knight back potentially to d4 to go to d4 later so for example in this line this is nice just scooping up the pawns it is opposite color bishops but it does seem as though white might have enough to try and uh, win this anyway so that's kind of the stockfish continuation uh, here to play bishop h6 uh, if we just look at this again for a moment uh, so knight d4 is also an alternative here and it seems as though you know it's a pleasant enough position but from an artistic point of view and uh, sort of outrage bishop d6 is actually a very very nice idea with an incredible follow-up uh, but the stockfish recommended defense wasn't used which is rookie six here and it seems here if rookie six had been played then bishop e7 supports f6 and this should be okay white can still play aggressively like this and it's actually more than okay it's a, it's a big advantage for white anyway in this in this scenario it actually looks much easier to play this kind of scenario especially a piece up uh, the pawns are not that dangerous so that actually still looks like a, a very easy to play scenario compared to the opposite color bishop uh, situation uh, so anyway in this position though rook e6 wasn't played we have actually rook d8 and it seems a bit silly to go into a self pin in general as a general principle we don't really want to go into self pins our intuition you know if we're experienced over the ball players we generally don't like awkward looking pieces or overloaded pieces or unprotected pieces or pinned pieces like this don't you don't really want to walk into those areas because you're just asking for like tactical trouble but here there's a specific follow-up which kind of justifies it quite well here uh can you spot it and yeah it's it's a move which actually uh it, it is really really strong in this position if i give you five seconds to pause the video i wonder what you would play here okay move of the game <laughs> move of the match knight f5 yeah it's actually threatening things like knight h6 check as a big example forking king and queen so let's look at some alternatives here g takes was played in the game <clears throat> on queen takes then we just play knight h6 check and we're discovering an attack on the queen so that just takes the queen on king h7 then actually the queen and knight are coordinated on the h6 square so we just play queen h6 check and actually knight e7 check is forcing the winner of the queen here so that's absolutely devastating or, or just first taking on g6 then taking the queen uh, to be sadistic so 
in the game GTEx was played it's too dangerous it seems not to do anything else and actually the very strongest continuation now Rook takes f5 is played it seems if leader doesn't play ultra precisely say check this position actually could be okay for black black might even be getting a small edge so the idea is Rook takes f5 now we have King h7 let's see critically here as a defensive try bishop d7 there's check check here and then rook g7 and you see the form pawn is supporting uh, the mate's threat on h7 so black would have to give up the queen to avoid getting mated so that's no good if queen takes g7 that's just clearly not very good at all so we have king h7 as the chosen defense queen c2 which sets up a discovered and double check and it's here it's just a really difficult position because you'll notice one big thing about this bishop it is covering an escape exit of the king as well so yeah it seems as though this is big trouble if queen g6 here then there's things like rook takes h5 check so that queen is pinned and will drop for example so black is in a bad state of affairs uh, affairs plays rook takes d6 here Alila just cashes out into an endgame check and at first sight you might think hold on knight and bishop do they match the rook here but we've got a form pawn black's got king side issues we have bishop d7 queen d2 dual purpose hitting d7 but also preparing to come in with queen h6 check knight b6 check king g8 and here there's a silent but absolutely killer move which literally leaves black in Zugzwang or Zugzwang pardon me Zugzwang <laughs> so wait to play and leave black in Zugzwang what would you play if I give you five seconds here to pause the video okay I hope you pause the video a3 and all of a sudden black has no move black has no moves here which can can save uh the situation really it's it's just too much if knight c8 then that drops control of the d5 square so white just plays rook d5 to play rook g5 check if you have a look at this this is just killing because again you know escape squares have been cut off with the queen on h6 so this is uh, basically winning the queen uh, the queen and getting mated uh, black's getting mated if bishop e8 then that loses control well gives access to d8 so we just play rook d8 and then bang rook takes and there's no queen takes because of uh queen g7 checkmate so same knight f8 then this is crushing rook e7 uh if bishop e6 then again rook d8 check is just even easier if knight d5 then we just so if the knight had gone to d5 then we just deflect the queen uh with rook takes d5 knowing that queen takes d5 we have queen g7 checkmate the form pawn wins there so the form pawn is helping to create this zugzwang uh so we have queen h7 that's pretty desperate and actually there's a tactical trick now can you see what white plays in this position and note also by the way you know with a3 any a5 rook takes b6 for example <laughs> so nothing really can move here so black's just gone you know queen h7 just loses to f7 check yes that's the trick so if king takes we just take the queen on queen takes this is just absolutely all over the queen versus the knight and bishop it's very easy for Lila to win this now let's have a look at what happened just for fun any trolling yeah the, the knight is taken off now <laughs> then the bishop is taken off in fact Leela under promotes a rook yeah a bit of trolling and checkmate okay another fun game Leela's a heavy scorer in certain variations on this particular network a real killer uh, if you enjoy this game as much as me I hope you did then please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to become a member at chessbold.net which is my own playing site and that will have a reference code 1053 uh, so 
You can play and play against other YouTubers. You can also check analysis of these games in advance or updated analysis from the improved menu, learn from the masters uh, on chess mode. So comments, questions, likes, shares, subscribes, all appreciated. Thanks very much.